Beholders are among the most terrifying, powerful, and iconic monsters in D&D. Here's how you kill them. So the first thing we need to do is know our enemy. Beholders may look like a rejected doodle from the Big Book of Tente Fun, but they have a multitude of terrifying powers. AC 18, hit points 180, speed 0, but a fly speed of 20 feet, and it can hover. Saving throws are plus 8 to intelligence, plus 7 to wisdom, and plus 8 to charisma? Can flying testicles be charismatic? It is immune to the prone condition, has dark vision at 120 feet, and has a passive perception of 22. You are not sneaking up on this thing. Unless you're a rogue with reliable talent and expertise in stealth, but let's not get into that. It's super evil, super racist, and worst of all, is super into the idea of murdering you. But that's what it is. Let's talk about what it does. In combat, it can bite with a plus five to hit at a range of five feet, targeting one person for an insane 4d6 damage. Whoa, that is, that is awful. <laughs> That is so bad. But don't get too excited, it does have other abilities. It can also use its action to fire off three random eye rays at a range of 120 feet. Now there are 10 options that it has, and they are... <gasps> Charm Ray, Paralyzing Ray, Fear Ray and the Slowing Ray, Petrification, Innovation and Disintegration Ray, Telekinetic Ray and the Sleeping Ray, Then there's Death Ray and that is all of the rays. You can look into the eye beams more specifically if you want, but they all require a DC 16 saving throw of either wisdom, dexterity, strength, or constitution, or you're going to suffer. All of them are bad, either incapacitating you or dealing insane damage, and it gets three per turn. Also, it gets three legendary actions, at which points it fires off another random eye ray. This basically means you've got six saving throws coming at your team every round, and failing any of them is going to fucking suck. But wait, Beholders actually have 11 eyes, and that juicy big one in the middle is the most special of all. The Beholder's central eye creates an area of anti-magic in a 150-foot cone. At the start of its turns, it decides whether this beam is on or off, and when it's on, magic items stop working and no spell effect can penetrate the area of the beam. But there are a couple of things to note about this effect. Firstly, although you can't cast spells while inside the anti-magic field, they don't actually end when the field hits them. They are just repressed, like my childhood trauma. Am I right, fellas? This means if you, say, cast Wall of Force and then an anti-magic field hit it, the wall would vanish, but it would spring back into action when the beam was turned off, assuming you'd maintained concentration. Secondly, the Beholder's eye rays are magical, meaning it can't zap you with its eyes if it's beaming down on you with its anti-magic cone. And with that, we have what the Beholder can do. Now let's talk about how to fight it in a fair, intelligent, sensible way to give you the best chance of success in an epic fight and also how to just completely troll the shit out of the encounter by exploiting game mechanics and making the whole thing a total joke. Let's go. But first, a sketch brought to you by Dungeon Notes. And as you finally fell the beholder, you feel the caverns around you shake. Dust falls from the ceiling, and you realize you have just five minutes to escape the labyrinth or never see daylight again. We take two rights, then a left, left, right, right, left, through the trusk, mouth, up through its butthole, through the iron gates. Wow, that, that's insane. How did you remember that? I've been taking notes. You've been taking notes on my campaign? I've been using Dungeon Notes, the journal specifically crafted to create an efficient and effortless system for note-taking, world-building, and more. I know every NPC you've introduced and every map you've created. I know every ally and enemy better than they know themselves. I have every player's AC, hit points, spell slots, and dick size contained within this tome, spanning multiple campaigns on one-shots to boot. I am the perfect player. Armed with this, I am an omniscient god! I am unstoppable! I roll to escape the dungeon! That's a nat one, isn't it? It is a nat one, yes. Well, well that's not the journal's fault, though. The, the journal is really good. Get your DM and player journals now in a variety of colors and a load of other amazing D&D stuff at 1985 Games. Use code d, &D Shorts at checkout for 15% off by following the link below and take your game to the next level. So let's talk tactics when fighting a beholder, the fair way. Tactic one, sticking together. So as we've established, the real threat of the beholder is those eye beams. The bite attack is laughable and the anti-magic cone is only powerful defensively. It doesn't actually hurt you to be inside the cone. 
This means, counterintuitively, you want to bunch the party together as much as possible. On the surface, splitting up sounds sensible, right? I mean, the Beholder can only target one area with its anti-magic cone. So sending your sorcerer one way and your wizard the other sounds like a smart idea, surely. Oh, hell no! See, what will happen if you do this is one of you is going to be completely useless in the anti-magic cone and the other one is going to get beamed into a pile of dust before they even get off more than one spell. Move as a unit, because this means if the Beholder wants to do any meaningful damage to anyone, it needs to shut off that anti-magic cone, which brings all your spellcasters online. At this point, all your spellcasters can strike, devastating the Beholder in one round, because... Tactic 2. Suck or save spells because the Beholder does not have legendary resistances. This means you're going to want to hit it with big spells that have the power to end the fight basically at once. Polymorph, for example, basically ends the fight because you're now fighting a lizard that you can deal with in any number of creative ways. Now granted, you are going to need to tank three eye beams to get to this point because the Beholder turns the anti-magic cone off at the start of its turn. But the Beholder's saving throws really aren't all that great. It's only got about a 50% chance of succeeding, assuming you're fighting it around level 9 with no magic items. And you'll all be striking together, meaning that something is very likely to get through. The point is to be aware of the power these suck or save spells have. The Beholder is smart and will probably spot the spellcasters right away. I mean, it's got a... It's got a lot of eyes. So if it wants to avoid getting instantly fucked, it's going to want to keep that anti-magic beam on, allowing your melee fighters to chip in freely on the Beholder. Which brings us to the next point. Tactic 3. Non-magical fight and flight. Non-magical flight in D&D is always good. And that's true when you're fighting a Beholder. It means you can just fly up to it and start wailing on it with your sword, unrestricted by the anti-magic field. Just be sure to return to your party before the end of your turn. Remember to stay bunched up. If you can't fly naturally, then I'm afraid it's good old-fashioned ranged weapons for you. And there you have the trap we've set. The Beholder can't remove the anti-magic beam because it risks instantly dying to a hold monster or polymorph. This leaves it with its terrible bite attack and pathetic movement speed while it gets chipped down by your melee warriors. Eventually, it will have to turn off that anti-magic cone, and that's when shit hits the fan, when you get insanely powerful spells and eye beams flying around like crazy. This gives you the best chance of success at lower levels, as it forces the need to act onto the Beholder, and no matter what it does, it's going to risk losing instantly, all while being chipped down. But what about the cheese? Surely there's a way to cheese this fight, right? A way to win with just one spell, pretty much? Well, as a matter of fact, there totally is. Let's talk about it. The cheese method. So, to hit you with an eye beam the Beholder has to be able to see you. This means that if you're in heavy obscurement from, say, the spell Darkness or the uncommon magical item Ever Smoking Bottle, you're totally safe. Remember, the Beholder's dark vision does not see through magical darkness. Example, you're a warlock and you cast darkness on your sword. Now, if the anti-magic cone is on, the spell is repressed and everyone can see just fine. You can chip the Beholder down with ranged, non-magical attacks and you can't be targeted by the Beholder's eye beams because you're in the anti-magic field. Alternatively, the Beholder decides it wants to eye beam you into a pile of dust. It turns off its anti-magic cone and instantly the darkness spell is no longer repressed and you are heavily obscured. This means that you and everyone within 30 feet of you cannot be targeted by those eye rays because the Beholder cannot see you. But you're a warlock, you have the Invocation Devil Sight, and you can kick its ass with total impunity. You can even build your entire party dynamic around this, with your fighter taking the blind fighting fighting style, and your wizard casting animate objects, which can fly and have a blind sight of 30 feet. This tactic wrecks the Beholder, because it completely shuts down its eye beams as long as the whole party stands together. Either it has the anti-magic cone on, and it can see you, but it can't beam you, or it has the anti-magic cone off, and it can't beam you because it can't see you. So to all of the DMs out there, why not give your Beholder a couple of legendary resistances and give it the ability to turn on or off its anti-magic cone as a legendary action? Ha! That's right, fool! All this time this was a tutorial for DMs to better brutalize you with homebrew Beholders. Just be aware that even these simple changes are enough to make this fight way more challenging. Only use them for high-level parties looking for a brutal, super-lethal fight. Also remember to like and subscribe and check out the Patreon to join in D&D games with the community. Bye!